Let's start by comparing the different types of barcodes. Some barcodes are designed to store letters, symbols, and numbers. Others are capable of storing large amounts of data. For our purposes, all we need is a number, so the code 128 format is recommended. Make sure to specify this format when ordering. As far as the physical tag, there's lots of different types as well. And we're vendor agnostic. We really don't care where you order these. We do not supply them ourselves. Uh, you can get, uh, you can print them yourself if you want to on uh, label, on just paper labels. Uh, there are foil asset labels, there's nylon, there's premium polyester labels, and there are also metal asset tags. We really recommend a uh, very, very durable tag since generally these will be attached to pieces of equipment in the field, which would be uh, more of a harsh environment. So you don't want these things scraping off easily and continuously having to replace them. So we recommend something like the rigid metal photo asset tag that uh, has a lot of layers to it that make it very difficult to, to scratch off or remove. These can be purchased from a company called Camcode. So if you go to camcode.com up at the very top, that's, that's where these can be purchased and we do recommend uh, this company. Now let's take, it look, take a look at adding a barcode to a tool record via the mobile devices. We have an iOS device on the left and we have an Android device on the right. There are very, very few differences in using barcodes with Share My Toolbox between the different types of devices. However, uh, one of the few differences is in uh, adding a barcode. So let's take a look at that. And it could be done a couple ways. We, if you swipe from left or to right on either device and click add tool, then you can add a barcode as you set up a new tool record. Or when you click on a tool record and you pull up the detail of a tool, we'll do it on both of these simultaneously. I'll click on one and one of the differences right off the bat is how we edit a tool record. So on the iOS device, we have an action button at the bottom where we access edit tool. And on the Android device, we have three dots up at the top right. Okay, So I'm gonna click on edit on both of these. On the iOS device, we're gonna click on the extended tab to access the barcode field. And on the Android device, we're going to scroll down just a little ways. So on both of them, we can click the plus button. And that will fire up the, the device's camera. And in this, you know, and I'm going to go down and what I would normally do is just read the barcode. But if I read any of these, these already exist. So we're not going to add that to the tool record, but that's how it's done. And it would just insert the number in that field and we would click save. And uh, the same on the Android device, we would just click on the plus button and it would fire up the camera. Now you'll notice that uh, my, my iOS camera under here, this is sort of an old one. This is a iPhone 5. So the resolution of the camera is, is radically different than uh, my Android device, which is a Galaxy uh, Edge 7. So a lot of your success in reading barcodes is going to be dependent upon the quality of your of your mobile device. We've noticed that particularly on iPads they uh, they don't have as good a camera as particularly the old ones and uh, the focal lengths tend to be a little bit different. So get, get used to to those differences in your devices. If you have something that doesn't read a barcode very well it could be an older device. The, the focal length could be could be different than some of the new new devices. So just play around with your device and try to get used to how far you need to hold it away from a from a barcode to read it effectively. You can also add barcodes via the web interface. We're not going to cover that here, but there are two methods of adding 
uh, barcodes on the, the web interface. One, you can just add the barcode uh, to the barcode field one record at a time, or you can actually import the barcode number uh, using our import templates. Before we discuss uh, the barcode workflow, make sure you're fairly familiar with the, the, all the video tutorials of the workflow, the other workflow in the system. Uh, if you know how to borrow a tool, loan a tool, check a tool in, transfer a tool, just using the normal processes and share my toolbox without barcodes, then you're definitely going to understand the barcode procedures. It really works the exact same way. The only difference is the barcode uh, scanner is going to retrieve the tool very quickly for you rather than you having to search for it. So just to review a couple of the scenarios here, and this is available in our documentation for download. Uh, when you start off, you scan a tool, it reads the number. If the barcode exists, then it's going to take you through the, the workflow process. If the barcode does not exist, then it's going to give you a message saying it doesn't exist. Do you want to scan another tool or do you want to exit? Let's say it does retrieve a matching barcode. Then it's going to look to who is the owner of the tool and what is the tool status. And we're going to look at the first two. So if you're the owner of the tool, you're the construction company, and the tool is available, meaning it has a yellow circle around it, then it's going to show you a lot of options. You're going to be able to view the tool, which, by the way, is available on every single option. Anybody can view a tool. But you'll also be able to edit a tool, delete a tool, loan it out, or make it unavailable. Now, if you're an employee, then or a connection to the construction company the tool owner then you're going to see a blue circle around the tool and indicating it's uh, available and it's available then you're only going to have two options you're going to be able to view the tool or borrow the tool so all the options are dependent upon who who the owner is of the tool and what the tool status is now let's take a look at some of these on the actual mobile device Again, we've got an iOS device on the left, signed on as the construction company, but now on the Android device on the right, we're signed on as an employee to see a few of the differences. So we're going to start off, and I'm going to start off with the, with the construction company. I'm going to swipe from left to right, fire up the barcode scanner, and I'm going to scan one of these tools. It reads it, it retrieves uh, the random orbit sander and again notice that we have the green circle around the tool indicating that uh, that's one of that's a, a tool that's currently loaned out so we can transfer it we can edit it or we can check it in um, notice delete option is not available we can't delete a tool if it's currently loaned out so we're going to check this one back in and then it's going to give me the option to scan another tool. Now, let's say we're the employee and we're going to scan a tool. And let's try scanning the exact same one. Fire up the barcode scanner. This has got a lot better camera on it. It's a much newer, newer uh, device. So in this case, we can only borrow the tool. Now remember what I said earlier about viewing a tool, that's always available. That's not down at the bottom as an option, but you access viewing a tool by clicking on the picture at the top. So I'm going to click on the, the tool icon in the blue circle, and that fires up the tool record. And I will be able to see uh, everything about the tool, and including the status and the, and the history. So if I want to borrow that, I click borrow. I can enter a date. Again, the workflow is identical here as it would be uh, if we had just searched for a tool. I'll hit confirm. We'll go back over to the tool owner. The tool owner has a message and they can hit accept. So again, options that are available when you scan a tool it's going to be dependent upon who the tool owner is and the status of the tool as to what options will be available.